Welcome to my presentation on return on capital. Let me write that down. Oh, I'm using the wrong color. Let me use a nicer color. Let me go to white. Let's say we had so we're going to do this return on capital. Now I want to do this presentation first because I think this this is really going to give you the big picture on how you should think about um, what something is worth, whether you should invest your money into it, and um, how you should weigh the different options you have in terms of uh, what you actually have to do with your money in terms of where you want to deploy. Do you want to put it in the bank? Do you want to buy a house? Do you want to pay off your credit cards, et cetera, et cetera? So let's just define what return on capital or. Um, and just so you know, I'm not necessarily going to be strict on uh, the accounting conventions or the GAAP conventions. That's uh, that's kind of the accounting conventions in this country. I'm going to do it more on a on a hands-on how a you know Joe investor should think about their money. So in this scenario, I define return on capital as just the cash you get per year per year divided by the cash, the total cash you put in you put in and well i don't want to just say cash i could we could we could say we could there's other ways to measure return but actually let's just to say keep it simple let's just say cash so let's think about how this uh, works out let's say i have an idea i have a restaurant and that restaurant it'll cost a million dollars it'll cost 1 million dollars investment in this restaurant. It's going to be a $1 million investment. And let's say that per year, after paying all the expenses, after paying the utility, after paying the uh, employees, after repairing and maintenance, and after paying taxes, everything, let's say this restaurant makes $100,000 a year. Let's say, and that's after taxes everything. That's a, that's what goes into my pocket. So in this situation, my return on capital, the way I've defined it, is one hundred thousand dollars divided by one million, or we could just say a thousand thousand dollars, or it equals ten percent. Ten percent. Pretty straightforward. You're probably saying, Sal, this this is silly. Uh, why are you wasting my time? Well, maybe it is. But I think you'll find that uh, this is going to lay a foundation that will will eventually blow your mind. So let's keep going. Let me do another. Okay. Okay. So I said the restaurant. Let's say I get a pizza restaurant. So let's just say the restaurant return on capital is equal to ten percent. Right? I could put a million dollars, and I'll get in a hundred thousand dollars per year, and that's where I got. A ten percent. Let me write that down. I get a hundred thousand per year off of one million investment. Now that's that's one project. And let's just say I know for sure that I'm gonna. I'm not gonna uh, factor in things like risk and probabilities just yet. Let's just say for sure I know that if I put my money here, I'm gonna get ten percent on my money. And Let's say the other option with my money is a a a beauty parlor. Beauty parlor. Bu B E beauty beauty parlor. A beauty parlor. And let's say that that also costs one million dollars. Let's say that also costs one million dollars. Well, and this beauty parlor gets me uh, fifty thousand dollars a year. Fifty thousand dollars a year. I think it's very obvious to you already how, which which investment you'd rather invest in, because this the return on capital on this beauty parlor is only fifty thousand divided by a million, or five percent. So this is obvious. You'd rather do uh, the restaurant than a beauty parlor. And in general, if you if you um, if you after adjusting for risk, you always want to go with the project that has high, the higher return on capital. And uh, later on, you know, there'll be nuances in terms of when you get that return. Maybe you'd like rather have a slightly lower return um, if you get the money faster, or or a slightly higher return if there's um, um, if you're taking on risk, et cetera, et cetera, or to compensate for risk. So we we know we want to do the restaurant, but 
do we definitely want to do the restaurant? I mean, we'd rather do the restaurant than the beauty parlor, right? But my question to you is, do we definitely want to do the restaurant? And this is where the return on on capital becomes interesting because what matters before we put the money into the restaurant is to think about what the cost of that money is to us. And this is what I think will will be a little bit of a a new concept to you. So I'm going to introduce you now to the notion of a cost of capital. So let me erase this. Okay. So the restaurant costs a million dollars. Costs me a million dollars. Costs me one million dollars. And it gives me one hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, yeah, one hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's a ten percent return on capital. Now, let's say I have to borrow all the money, and there are some banks that's willing to give me all the money for this restaurant. And the interest rate on this loan is, let's say it's uh, so let's say the loan. The interest rate is fifteen percent. Is it still a good idea for me to open up uh, the restaurant? Well, if I if I have a loan and I have to borrow the whole amount, so I'm going to have a loan for one million dollars, right, to buy that same restaurant, and I'm going to be charged fifteen percent in interest every year, and I'm not going to take taxes and the fact that you could deduct taxes, et cetera, et cetera, into account just yet. Let's just assume that my total cost is fifteen percent per year in interest. So I'm going to have to spend a hundred fifty thousand dollars per year in interest. So my question to you is, does it still make sense for me to open up this restaurant? Every year I'm going to be making $100,000 from the restaurant itself, but I'm going to be paying $150,000 a year in interest. So I, you'll, you'll probably say, Sal, once again, you have uh, just restated the obvious. No, you would not want to do this restaurant, because every year $50,000 will be burning out of your pocket. Now you might think that this is obvious, but I'm going to show you many, many examples of where people are actively doing this, people who uh, you, you would otherwise assume um, could could do this type of math. And it's especially happening in the housing market. But anyway, so in this situation, you wouldn't want to invest it. And a very simple way of thinking about this is you would only want to invest. You only want to do a project if your return return on capital is greater than Let's say we could call it your, then your cost of capital. Cost of capital. This is the only time that you want to invest in a project. With that said, I'm not going to go uh, back to what we just did. I, I just showed you something that we thought was obvious, but I'm, not, I'm going to re-ask you a question. So we had the restaurant, and we have the beauty parlor. Let's call it BP for short. They both cost a million dollars. Let me write ROC. The ROC of the restaurant, we said, was 10%. And the ROC on the beauty parlor, we said, was 5%. So right now, superficially, it looks like the restaurant is just a better uh, project. But then we said the cost of capital, so the interest rate, which is our, how much does it cost for us to take, get that million dollars? The interest rate to borrow money for a restaurant is 15%. And we said that this is not a good investment, because our cost of capital is higher than our return on capital. And you could do the math and figure it out. But what if there was some kind of government program that they just felt that um, there weren't enough beauty parlors in the country, and they were willing to give you a really cheap loan to buy a beauty parlor? And the government program, they said, we're going to give you a low interest loan of 2%. Huh. So my question to you is, now which project would you rather do? Superficially, it looks like the restaurant was better. You get you get a 10% return as opposed to a 5%. But your cost of capital, the interest rate you would have to pay on a loan for the beauty parlor, all of a sudden looks a little bit better. In fact, this is actually a good investment, because your cost of capital is less than your return on capital. And we can even do the math. Every year, the beauty parlor will generate $50,000, and you'll be paying $20,000 in interest. So you'll be netting $30,000 without having to put any money for yourself. You'll be borrowing all the money. So clearly, this is a good investment. So that's it now for the intro on return on capital and cost of capital. And my next presentations, I'll go into a little bit more detail and do a few more uh, new.